Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. In this interview, I'd like to focus in on the process of integrating uh, this kind of information. And let me start with an interesting case history. It, uh, I think exemplifies potentially one of the most positive cases. I know it's not one of your cases, but I bring it up because years ago I interviewed Carol Ann Dreyer, a well-known psychic. And I can tell you it's one of the most popular interviews I ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, she had the ability, as she put it, to see the soul. And she had many clients uh, in Hollywood. One okay. of her clients uh, whom I met was Tina Turner, the singer. And Carol uh, worked with Tina at a time when Tina wasn't really very famous. She was doing small shows in Las Vegas. She was basically a battered housewife at the time, carrying a huge personal debt. And uh, Tina herself acknowledges this in her autobiography and the impact that Carol had on her because Carol gave her a psychic reading in which Carol identified her past lifetime as the female Egyptian pharaoh had cheap suit. And as a result of this, or perhaps not as a result, but at least following this, Tina's turned her life around. She got rid of uh, her abusive husband and became a superstar and has been a superstar ever since. Wrote a song called I Might Have Been Queen. So here's an example, whether or not we have any reason for acknowledging that Tina Turner uh, resembles Het Sheepsuit in any way, because we, we don't know really that much about Het Sheepsuit. Um, in any case, the idea that Tina might have been, I think, was quite instrumental, as she indicates in her own autobiography, of making a major change in, in her life. And you, in our previous interview, also described how uh, the past life identification uh, that you uh, encountered over a period of many years uh, wrought a change in your life to the point where you're more of a, uh, your passion is more for past life research than it is, I suppose, for the practice of medicine these days. That's definitely true. Yeah. Now, you've identified a past life for me as William James. And you and other people seem convinced of it. William James is a hero of mine. Uh, I don't know that it's changed my life dramatically. I kind of hope it would. Well, you were pretty much living the life of William James before you knew it. And, <clears throat> um, or before you recognized the past life connection. And, you know, that's similar to the Laurel and Hardy cases, mm -hmm. where they as children replicated the development or a comedic development yeah. of Laurel and Hardy unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And when I first called them out of the blue yeah. to tell them that they're the reincarnations of Laurel and Hardy, mm -hmm. everybody was kind of shocked at first because they were raised Jewish. They never considered reincarnation. Mm -hmm. and, and their but they had a comedy act they were doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they've been doing comedy ever since they were children. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's, it's almost surreal, they, put together Laurel and Hardy music tracks. Mm -hmm. So music tracks from Laurel and Hardy music, they made cassettes out of. Mm -hmm. And they used to drive around New York City playing Laurel and Hardy theme music as the reincarnation of Laurel and Hardy, even though they didn't r recognize that they were the reincarnations of Laurel and Hardy. Uh -huh. But their father is a trial attorney. Mm -hmm. And even though this seems, and and he's Jewish. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, even though this seems so outlandish at first, when they start to think about all the parallels, now the whole family totally supports it. Mm -hmm. 